So hi there, I'm Adam Hunter with Cherry Becker. We are CPAs and advisors who focus on serving innovative and growth focused middle market companies throughout the United States. Today, I'm lucky to have Monica Bulger here, CEO of cure for You, to hear a little more about what they do, how they have pivoted the last few months, and what keeps them committed to their mission. Welcome, Monica. To start Thank us you. off, tell us a little bit about cure for You. Sure. Thank you for having me. So cure for You is an uh, all-in-one virtual care platform. Um, we sell our platform to um, providers, and they use the platform to interact uh, with their patients. Um, it does communication tools like telehealth, uh, secure messaging, um, and but it also has all the other things, care plans, sharing of data, anything that a provider needs to interact with their patients when they're not together. Um, and then it's married up with um, artificial intelligence to make sure that that data we collect on behalf of the providers for the, from their patients is really relevant and specific for the individual provider. So it helps them uh, navigate the treatment and the care of their um, patients. And obviously that's very important, especially in today's day and age and where we're sitting with the current pandemic crisis, of course. Yes. Um, now, how did you really navigate or, or be able to find and acquire the necessary resources to, to, to really get the business off the ground? Yeah. Well, and I think um, our situation was a little different. Um, we're from Denmark. That's the accent. Um, we had already, um, I built a company together with my husband. We had already uh, built a similar company like this in, in Europe. Um, we, did the, we did the first patient portal in the world back in 2001. Um, so we did have a lot of experience in what it meant about building the business, um, but we did not have the relationships um, here in the U.S. So when we came over here, our initial um, effort was to find the right partnerships, build the right relationships um, that could help us navigate um, healthcare here in the U.S. U.S. is a is, um, pretty complex healthcare system um, compared to what we've used to in, in Europe. Um, now, one thing I sort of mentioned to earlier with regards to the COVID pandemic, uh, obviously, it's obviously impacted and affected a lot of companies, you know, really everyone, I think. Um, what's a couple of ways that's affected your company? And really, how are you pivoting or changing uh, to overcome these hurdles? No, it's a great question. So we, well, we were lucky, right, because we kind of prepared for this situation, not the pandemic, but we knew that all providers would eventually walk into um, being more virtual than in office. Um, so uh, my background is I'm a physician. So I know what is, I know the relationships and, and I could see what was coming. So our platform was already built for this. And so how this impacted us was that we, um, we more or less doubled in size in a month or two um, with, um, with customers. Um, we helped um, three to 4,000 providers get connected with the um, patients within uh, four to six weeks. Um, the customers we already had um, just called us Saturday night and said, I need telehealth tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> and so because the platform was already there, it was, it was, it was lucky for us because it was just turning on the switch. Um, we did have to, um, I mean, taking that growth, even though we were ready for it, it was, it was a lot. Um, and mm -hmm. so we had to be very innovative in our approach and how do we, how do we onboard the providers so quickly? Um, most of those providers, if you had asked them before, COVID would have said, I will never do telehealth with my patients. That's not necessary. I like to see them face to face. Uh, and now, so what before we had to be more hands-on with coaching. Now we could not be there in person. So it was all virtual for us. Um, so that's really how it, the main impact has had on our business is it has pushed us the two couple of two or three years ahead of what we had expected in the timeline of our platform. So it sounds like not serendipity, but it also sort of may have helped ease some of those concerns that your physicians or providers may have had about transitioning to this model. This sort of maybe has accelerated the timeline of your growth where almost you seem to have to, you know, drink out of a garden, uh, drink out of a fire hose, right? Yeah, yeah, no, it definitely has. Um, so it, it, there was always a, it, there was always a lot of excitement about what we did. Um, mm -hmm. People were like, "Yes, we can see this is the future. This is where we need to go." But there was no urgency. 
Um, and so that has really propelled them into where they're now comfortable with it and they want to do more. Um, so it's mm -hmm. really exciting right now because the innovation is kind of just speeding up, right? They're coming with, way. this is great. Can we also do this and so on? So, so mm -hmm. um, very, very exciting times um, for us right now. Yeah, I, I can't wait. <laughs> um, so I'm going to end on this one for you. And really, you know, knowing what you know now, how you started, some of the unique you know, issues you faced, what advice would you give to someone just starting out um, in today's day and age? Well, I think uh, what I've learned from starting up the business is really the, um, trust yourself. Trust your gut feeling is, is a very important thing. And another very important thing is that you always have to do most of the hard work. Um, mm -hmm. That part about saying, I'm going to hire somebody that then can start. I mean, now you're the one finding the first customers. You're the one that is launching the product first. You are the one that is pushing it forward. <clears throat> Sorry, always. Um, you, it's, if, if it's your business, you're the one um, that is going to, to take it to the next level. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Monica. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me.